and we are live what is going on everyone it's your boy johnny dunn and we back with another one now today another epic vv live stream we have the first appearance of dr octopus this is amazing spider-man issue number three this is going to be a big one i think especially dr octopus is such a big character right big villain and with that spider-man movie coming out soon you know he plays a huge role in it and it's already a huge comic book for the collectors so I think this is definitely going to be a hodl. This is definitely going to be, it's already pushing up that amazing Spider-Man number one price. I think the common's up to like 115 bucks right now, which I stocked up early, you know, pretty cheap. And luckily, you know, that's paying off right now. What's going on, Jabe? How we doing, fam? Now, let me go over the details real quick. Again, $7 blind box for this one. We have 30,000 total editions. It's going to sell out really quick, so... Hopefully, you know, some people on the stream can get one today. We got the common classic cover, 21,000 editions, the uncommon 5,000 editions, the rare 2,350, the ultra rare 1,050, and of course, the secret rare 600 editions. Now, some of these covers I like a lot. It's not your, you know, typical secret rare, all white background, but instead what we have here is, I think it's a pretty cool little switch up. Let me go over the, what they look like. So here's the common which I like a lot, the common, the way it looks. I'm pretty sure this comic book in the real world goes for close to $300,000 at the highest grade. Shout out to Comics and Crypto. This is the rare. Now, the uncommon looks just like the common, just not in color, obviously, like they normally do. The rare looks pretty cool, but it's black and white. And the ultra rare. This is one of my favorites for sure today. Doc Ock right there with Spider-Man at the bottom in color. The same as the rare, just not, the rare's not in color. And then, of course, the secret rare. Usually, we have that plain all-white background, but today, kind of like that orangey, orangey feel with the Doc Ock attacking Spider-Man. Orangey, yellowish. I'm color, I'm kind of colorblind, so I can't really tell. <laughs> Pretty sure it's like an orange color. We got Crypto Cade in the house. Let's go. I might have to see the movie as well. Yeah, I really think the movie is going to be big time. We already see how fast those tickets sold out, right? Just shows you how popular and how much demand there is for Spider-Man. I mean, we saw 30,000 editions, I think, for the common Spider-Man. The price is up over $300, and there's only, I think, 200 left in the market. I mean, it just goes to show you that rarity, and, and I would say, you know, just because something is super limited, super scarce, doesn't always mean that it's going to be super valuable. It has to have demand, right? So that's why a lot of times people have that argument, is this better or is that better? This one has a bigger IP brand, but this one's a lot more you know, limited. It kind of goes hand in hand. You have to include everything that involves it. You can't just say this one is more limited, so this one's more valuable, or this one's a bigger IP, so this one's more valuable. You have to take in consideration absolutely everything. My boy is back. How we doing, Jabes? Good afternoon, guys. And Petro had a good day last time. Got his first comic on the drop. Hopefully you get one today too, my man, because today's going to be a good one. I think commons probably will start out kind of cheap right away. And I think all the people that realize that this is a pretty big comic book, they're going to push the price up of those commons. Pretty decent amount. At one point, I had, I think, over 10. Um, but I only got a few because what I did lately was, I would say about two weeks ago, I would say about a week or two weeks ago, right before that run up of all those common comic books, I went around and I was flipping a lot of my higher digits to then go for a three digit common. So I have a three digit Amazing Spider-Man one I'm pretty happy about. I got that for pretty cheap, too. Let me see if I can find exactly how much I paid for that, because it's going to show you that. These comic books, you know, just ran up pretty, pretty recently. I think a lot of people were sleeping on the comments, so I was going around and I was like, you know what? I can't afford these secret rares at 30K, 20K, 10K, obviously. And what I was thinking, too, is me personally, I, I've never collected comic books. So I really wanted to try to collect the comic books that are actually out there in the real world. And the commons, besides a few of them, I think House of X is one where the secret rare is the one that's in the physical world, too. But like this one right here, a 949, a 949, Amazing Spider-Man. I paid $2.99 for it. So I thought I paid actually a little bit less than that. So that's one of the more expensive ones that I paid for. I was getting some three-digit commons for less than $80. And I thought that was one of them, but 
this one I paid a little bit of you know a little bit of money money for it. But if you look at when the market opens, you know how how expensive these three digit commons are now. I mean, especially the Marvel Comics number one. I was trying to grab one of those, but it was out of my price range, and then it ran up. I think I talked about the commons a little bit too soon before I grabbed them all. <laughs> how we doing, C spill? But that's why duplicates, you know, are so important, right? I mean, I grabbed a bunch. We just talked about on Twitter. If you guys are tuning in from the Twitter fam, um, someone called me out for selling a Captain America, and I bought 32 FA Captain Americas when they were pretty cheap. And that's the benefit of being able to stack up on something that's cheap that you see value in or that you that you really like at the time. Because eventually, if you're able to hold those, they're probably going to appreciate. Not financial advice. Nothing I say is financial advice, of course. But I think I just let one go for 60. And people are worried, like, is that the top now, right? And the price did dip down a little bit, I think down to 50 bucks, maybe 55. But it's the first appearance of Captain America. I definitely see it coming back up. I just need a little bit of liquidity real, liquid, liquidity real quick. But I do have a couple more Captain Americas, and I do have a low mint. I think it's a 700 or something. Not crazy low, but how to get a three-digit. That's kind of been my thing lately. I've been just trying to collect more so in the route of what I love. And the three digits have really grown on me big time, collectibles and comics. And so I'm just trying to collect things that I like now. I, I feel like I have a pretty good amount of sets already. I have 52 right now. And I want to float around anywhere from like 45 to 50 and kind of stack up those master collector points as we get closer to the release of that. And that's what I want to use those sets for. Kind of use those sets as like a foundation to build those master collector points every day but kind of tailor my showroom at the same time now to stuff that I really, really love. And we haven't even gotten to the sports yet. So like <laughs> the way I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wow, okay. I've got introduced to all this new artwork from all these awesome artists. Um, you know, a lot of the comic stuff, a whole bunch of superhero stuff. But, you know, I was a big fan of Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, but not so much all of the others. So even though I think a lot of these are going to still go up in value big time, I'm kind of slowly tailoring my collection to things that I love with, with like without selling, you know, those big collectibles too soon. So that's just kind of my my mindset right now. We got audible collective in the house today. How we doing, my man? He said, what's up, brother? How's it going? Missed a drop yesterday. Work got in the way. Well, you saved the drop for a good one today. Today's drop is going to be good. December in the house. Yo, good evening, Johnny. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Today is going to be a mission for sure. I think I've been having pretty solid, pretty easy drops, I would say, recently. Like, I felt like I would say the last handful of comics. I mean, I think you have seen how pretty successful I've been. And I feel like today is going to be a different story. I, I think today I'm kind of used to getting a drop right now. And I may be disappointed today, I feel like. So again, shout out to anybody who has been getting the drops because they have been really hard to get. This is definitely a comic that I really love too. Like, it's definitely one that I'm trying to get for sure. Let's go the three digits. Thank you, thank you. And Petro has got a question here. That's a good question too. Can I ask, does anyone know if I get my missus to download VV? Can I just sign in my account to try on two phones or will she need her own account? Um, Let's see here. Like, are you talking about for the drops? For the drops, I think you will need a separate account um, in order for it to work. I would just create an account for her and then that way um, you can manage it, she can manage it, etc. But that's what I would do because, you know, they say... You shouldn't be creating multiple accounts. And I agree. I don't think you should be creating multiple accounts. But I think there's exceptions. I know a lot of people who create ones for their kids, for their wives, etc. So I think that's an exception. I think that's okay. It's almost like, you know, we've built this community up so well to the point where there's obviously going to be bad actors, people that take advantage of the system. But I think if you're pretty honest with it, I think it can go a long way. Plus, maybe uses a pretty solid bot detection and all kinds of, you know, security measures in place to where they have an ai system to where if they detect you are taking advantage of the system you know using it for something else i think 
I think you will get detected and, and stuff like that. So if you keep it 100, I think there's no problem with that. Vander, today is the secret rare day. I think today, you know, a couple of people in the chat are going to get blessed today. No, I did not see the new notice when you go to buy gems. I haven't bought gems. Actually, I, I did buy gems about a week ago. I'm not sure if I noticed the difference or not. We in the building, gang. Don't trip. How we doing, Brendan? How we doing, fam? <laughs> we got Brendan in the building. Yeah, two separate accounts, I'm pretty sure. Two Colton Row. How we doing? Yo, yo, yo. Good morning, boys. Good luck, Johnny. Appreciate you, Colton. Colton said he missed yesterday's drop. A lot of people missed yesterday's drop. Chad Ross in the house. How we doing, brother? Again, for anyone tuning in, you guys probably know already how to get to the drops, but anyone who's new maybe wants to figure out how do we get to these drops. So my phone's like loading on the screen right now, but I don't think it'll matter. Here we go. So we're at the store tab at the bottom of the screen, you know, store down here. This is the home screen. Click that main button. We got this amazing Spider-Man number two issue. You can see the timer. And that's the screen that you want to be on for this drop. You know, you want to be on there paying attention. Once it gets to a minute, you got to be on alert, on red alert for uh, the countdown because it goes quick. I agree. I mean, I think we're used to a lot of these secret rares being on that white background. And I think it looks super clean that way. It definitely looks valuable, something like that. But also, I like the way sometimes they switch it up and, you know, they go for a colorful background. We know that this is an important comic book, and yet we see the Secret Rare kind of have some colors to it. So I like the fact that they switch it up a little bit. I'm definitely hoping for a Secret Rare. I got a good feeling today. I woke up. I felt like I was going to get an Ultra Rare or a Secret Rare today. I just had one of those feelings. I don't know why, but maybe I always have those feelings. I mean, sometimes I don't, but... Let's go and Petro getting the whole fam involved with Vivi. That's what I'm talking about. Vivi will turn into a whole family event, I think, because eventually everybody's going to be wearing their glasses, right? Everybody's going to be looking at everybody else's collections. You know, that's kind of how we're going to merge, I think, the physical and the augmented reality world. Yo, I agree, Borat. Just a comment today would be great. Absolutely. I will probably try to snipe a low mint on this one as well so my game plan here hopefully you guys don't ruin my game plan you guys snipe them all before i do <laughs> but i'm always open to telling my plans until it gets too big and then i'll have to <laughs> create a paid group <laughs> i'm just kidding just jokes just jokes we got kelvin in the house what's going on morning fam but so my game plan with this one is maybe get a common right Look for in the market, snipe a three digits, something kind of cheap that I have enough gems for. And then if I absolutely have to, I would I would sell the common if it went back up and just pay the difference. But I try to hold at least one common if I can. If I flip for that three digit, that way, when I think the commons do run up in price, appreciate a lot. I'll have that three digit to keep for myself for my collection, but then I'll be able to sell that higher edition common. But it all depends. Sometimes, you know. I do have to end up selling it, but I think the commons are going to appreciate big time. I think it all depends on this weekend's drop. If the weekend's drop, you know, isn't as big, right? Every week I feel like is a huge drop <laughs> if we don't know what it is. And I think they said something in uh, the AMA recently. Shout out to the woman of Vivi. They uh, relaunched their channel and they had recently and they talked about it a little bit. They said possibly an anime type drop or something like that has been the uh, the word. So if it's huge, you know, a huge drop, I could see maybe people sleep on these comments today for a little bit longer. Just takes a little bit longer to appreciate, I would say. But then if this weekend's drop, you know, isn't an absolute banger, you know, it's not huge, but it's still pretty cool. I think that's when these will go up. I like all of these. Amazing Spider-Man number one. I'm so happy. That's probably my favorite comment that I have. Ooh, real talk. Now we're getting real crazy. I like it. I like it. So I do think that's kind of the evolution of this. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen that soon. 
this is what real talk said what's your opinion on the citroen nft do you think the capability to buy a vehicle nft on vv will lead to a purchase in the physical so i do see that happening in the future absolutely but i think at first right now it's a little bit too early for that um but i see down the road that can definitely happen i mean maybe you won't have access to the full car it depends on how expensive these nfts will be in the future but maybe like some kind of you know sale price discount i have no idea maybe just the ability to buy one because i know a lot of these there's only a few made in the physical world and i think soon we're going to bring on some serious serious big time car collectors um, as we roll out these car licenses i mean this is just the beginning right i think these cars will be amazing looking on vv that's for sure we got 14 minutes to drop we in the building smash the like button how we doing night rider how we doing fam what to do vv fan how are all your feelings today for the drop how are you all feeling for the today's drop i should say i'm feeling great my man i'm feeling blessed feeling as wonderful would say feeling wonderful <laughs> um i'm excited to the day when my whole family do the drops with me I think that's gonna be fun. Yeah, my family doesn't do the drops. They don't do the drops with me. Um, <laughs> my parents don't even have cell phones. They're they're so old school with it. But I think if anyone, I think my grandma would do the drops with me. She'd probably be willing to download an account. Let's go ahead and do. Love anime. I, I'm actually not the biggest fan of anime. Um, I like some shows, but. I'm not like crazy about it, but I know how big it is. It's like a cult following in itself, for sure. December, you're the best. Guys, remember to hit the like and subscribe. Give some love to our boy, John and Don. Nicole, how we doing? How we doing? Hopefully you got one today. I know you struck out the other day. So hopefully today brings a little bit more success to you. Billy Bob Bitcoin. <laughs> he said, take an L so far, but not giving up. I definitely think this is a big drop for sure. I oh, this is actually a good question. B Chase, do you think another black and white Batman or Superman drop will come before the end of the year? Oh, now we know it was Superman, we've only got the uncommon, right? The uncommon was the full set by itself. And I think the reason why they did that is because you know, we we had a lot more people when Superman dropped compared to when the first Batman dropped, the, the Todd McFarlane Batman. And I think there was some confusion in the beginning when the first appearance of Todd McFarlane dropped in the set with everything else so i think with superman they wanted to make sure since we had a lot more people you know put emphasis that this is the first appearance of superman you know full set by itself this is the one right this is the holy grail superman and then i think we'll see the ultra rare come out the, the common the rare maybe in a full set by itself i don't know if we'll get that before the end of the year not sure not sure i could see superman maybe waiting a little bit batman that's interesting. That's interesting. I, I think Batman, they could be saving. I'm not sure why I feel like that, but I mean, end of this year, I do expect some kind of, I guess I'm more so thinking that we're going to get some kind of Christmas tailored launch. I mean, like the Grinch was kind of teased on Instagram. I don't think it was actually teased as a drop. Obviously it was kind of just a tease with all the bots going on. And David, he was just making a joke, but he does everything for a reason. And I feel like he included Grinch in there for some kind of reason jabe i think today's drop is going to be a lot harder than tomorrow yesterday's drop i think yesterday's drop was definitely an easier drop compared to what today's going to be get z hopefully you do well today hopefully you do well you struck out yesterday hopefully you have better luck today i'm definitely excited for another batman drop that's for sure i just want to collect them all and then be able to get the batmobile i'm really excited for the batmobile but being able to collect all the sets now in Batman is not going to be an easy feat at all. That's why I was kind of hoping, you know, early on, we were everybody in the community was like, oh, another Batman series. But me, I was like, come on, I want them all to come out before the whole world finds out about VV. That way it'd be possible to collect all 100 series. But I think there's probably going to be 20 series, right? 20 series, one to 100.
I'm loving the drops. VV is great. Hope I get one today and good luck to all. From the cold. I dig the art styles and anime on the higher class projects. Interesting. I'd have to dive into the anime bag. Roman Z, hey JD, good luck today as always. What do you think about the upcoming cars drops? Not sure about them. How come you're not sure about them? I mean, is it just because you haven't heard about them? That's kind of one thing that hit me was when they dropped, I was like, I've never heard of this brand at all. So how to do some digging, how to find out about it. But that's one thing that I noticed right away is that I was like, wow, these are high end classy looking cars. And some of them go for expensive amount of money in the real world too. I was liking them. Um, I think I have it up here, actually. I don't. I'll just Google it real quick. Some of these cars look crazy looking. Now, this is just the beginning, too. I think this is just the beginning of their car rollout, I would say. I think it's going to pay definitely a bigger... It's going to put more of a focus on that DeLorean, I think, because it was the first car ever. But could you imagine some of these? Like, look at this one right here. That one looks amazing. Even the one above it. That one looks awesome, I think. This one just looks kind of ridiculous, but <laughs> that one I thought looked pretty cool. You got some cool looking ones. We got some futuristic. We got classic looking ones. And VV has said before, you know, they, they've said that they're going to roll out their futuristic concept cars, the classic old school cars from GM. I know there's a lot of car collectors out there. I think poor man Prince is one. I think he'd be a big fan of the old school cars. Let's go. Hit that like button for Brody. Hey, appreciate you big time, big time. I'm not sure, Kelvin, to be honest. Um, I know they're trying to do their own thing out there. I don't think anyone's really in competition with VV. Um, I think VV is such in their own lane as a premium licensed digital collectibles app with social media on it on top of being such an easy to use app. With all these IP brands, like you can't you can't compete with that. Like, I mean, other there's probably gonna be room for other platforms, I think, absolutely in this space. But I think Komi and VV is just gonna be such a top player in this, it's gonna be unbelievable. Ooh, this is a good question, too. Real talk. All right. What spaces do you think Ecomi will explore other than NFTs that will surprise? This is interesting. Now, Ecomi is a technology company, right? So that right there from the get-go had, excuse me, had me thinking way more above and beyond than just NFTs. I think eventually they will come out with their own glasses. The first thing that they came out with before the NFT, before the VV app, was actually their wallet, right? The Ecomi hardware wallet. And when that comes back out again, that's going to be a whole VV drop in itself. That's going to sell out ASAP. But, you know, that was their first ever thing that they created. Then they went to the VV app. Then I think they're going to probably go back to say, maybe the glasses. I see this whole space developing kind of like what Jeremy said, German Padawan, from a tech entertainment sector in a space to a tech education space. They're going to incorporate all this technology that we're using for entertainment right now, I think into the school systems. And then once they do that, you know, the floodgates are open and it's off to the races. I think that's just the beginning. We're going to start learning with augmented reality glasses. We're going to start having textbooks as digital textbooks. I mean, it would just save so much money from schools to college textbooks to be NFTs digitally. I remember I stopped buying textbooks my junior year in college because I had to buy three or four textbooks and it was over a thousand dollars. I was like, I don't have the kind of money for just a couple textbooks. So this is ridiculous. So could you imagine if it was only $50 for all those textbooks and just digitally? I think that's kind of the way it's going to go. Yes, today is your day, Green Goblin. Let's go. Waiting on my first secret rare. Me too. Me too. Want to drop at least. Shout out to Luke. Let's get it. Let's go. Billy Bob Bitcoin. Got my mom an account and participating on our first drop. Yes. 70 year olds are taking over VV. That's amazing. That's amazing to hear. And I can definitely see that happening because you got to think 
social media was almost the same same way, right? There's so many people that did not believe in social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. They were against it at first. I mean, good or bad, right? I mean, that's a whole debate in itself, but that's just kind of the facts. But a lot of people, especially the older generation, they were against it at first. All the kids got on MySpace first, then kind of the college kids got on the Facebook. But then the parents started to get on, right? Because then the kids were on it and the parents wanted to be on something that the kids were on. Then the grandparents got on Facebook and, and social media. And I, I think the same kind of evolution will happen with NFTs and especially the VV app. You know, I would say their, their audience is a little bit older than they anticipated at first. I think they anticipated a younger generation, but it's kind of in between right now. Like 20 to 40 years old would be like their main main audience i would say and then i think the kids will get on and then once the kids and the parents are on that's when you see you know the grandparents get on something that everybody else is on in the family and then you have the whole family on vv west in the building jd is goat <laughs> appreciate you man appreciate you big time good luck fam eight minutes yep we got three minutes so i'm pretty far behind on this chat three minutes and 39 seconds <laughs> let's go we got Rob Remington in the house. Right, yeah, Citroen, it's not like a, you know, a Lamborghini, right? A name brand, it's not your top top name brand of a car, but or a Bentley, Rolls-Royce type thing, right? But I think it it's just beginning. They do have the um need not not need for speed. I always say need for speed. <laughs> They do have the Fast and the Furious license, so I think we're going to see a lot of cars coming from them. They have the GM license, so we're going to see a lot of classic GM cars, futuristic GM cars. And once you have this many brands, the Lamborghinis, the Rolls Royce, the Bentleys, they're going to be calling. They're going to say, how do we get on this app as well? Hey, big time. Appreciate you, big time, dudes. Good luck to everyone. Got a jet right after the drop. Just want to say what up to my fave YouTuber and Omi Homie JD. Hey, Luke Blackby in the house, too. Let's go, fam. I still can't believe it, man. The secret rare in the house. <laughs> Let's go. Every new idea sounds crazy at first. That's a fact, my man. That's a fact. I want to make my invention happen. I mean, people laughed at me for years, and it still has never been made. Pasmanian, Pasmanian in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, ice tennis. <laughs> That's interesting, bro. That could be like skating, right? I like that concept. I'm making ice tennis right now and people are laughing, but just you wait. It'll be popular. And you're probably doing that because it's cold where you're at. I mean, ice is probably on the lake, so you got to figure out, you know, how you're going to – or ice is on the tennis courts. But if you're slipping and sliding all over the tennis courts, it's kind of like skating, hockey, and tennis at once. That would actually be kind of fun. I would play that. I would actually definitely play that. That's actually a really good game the more I think about it. Send positive good vibes. Oh, sending positive good luck. Money, money, money vibes, y'all. <laughs> Let's go, Visions Production. I definitely think we'll be able to drive the cars in AR in the cold. That's a fact. I mean, I'm not sure if you were here when the DeLorean dropped, but the common DeLorean, you're actually able to remote control and drive it around the streets and everything. And then they took the function away after like 10 minutes. And they said it's coming back in. We got a minute left to the drop. So I think once they activate that again in the common, it's going to be, one, awesome and fun to use. But you could see the price probably skyrocket on that. Not financial advice. <laughs> Coffee gate. <laughs> All right. 35 seconds. 30, 35 seconds right now. Oh, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, like progress percentage dates or progress percentages instead of dates. I like that idea. All right, y'all. 18 seconds to the drop. Let's do this. 15 seconds. This is a good one, y'all. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Bye now. I think I got it. Capture containing a boat.
Oh man. One. I can't tell that's a boat or a bridge. Containing a boat. Is this a boat? I got it. Let's go. <laughs> Man, those captures are scary. That's probably the scariest thing in the world. <laughs> Let's go, low mint. Man, those captures got me going. I'm on a roll right now with drops. Let's go. 11,780. I'll take it all day. Let's go, Doc Ock. How we do, fam? That would ease expectations. I definitely agree. That I, that's a good point. Instead of saying, like, you know, it's probably going to be done by this date. They have said it a lot of times with the percentages. Like, they've, they talk about the migration. Um. Yeah, so I think the common DeLorean, Nicole, will get drivable at some point again. Let's go. Tristan Knight said, we'll be a true Canadian sport. Got my channel up now, too. Really early stages at the moment, but I've tested it, and it works. That's going to be a fun sport. I guarantee you that's going to be a fun sport. And if you wanted to actually – I'm trying to think – tennis. So I was going to say, like, a, you can't really tackle people because you're going to be on the same team, on the same side. So, <laughs> like – No, Cap 2D did not get one. Borat struck out. Vision's got one. Let's go. So you can. So absolutely. So anybody who struck out, like my buy now button is still up. So don't hit back. Stay on that screen right now and just keep tapping. This is basically how you get a rebound. And supposedly every four minutes, so like in two more minutes, yeah, in two more minutes, 11.04 Eastern time. Definitely keep trying. Like, I'm not going to keep trying. Just I just wanted to show you guys because um, I got one. And I feel like I don't need to. I'd rather, you know, someone else have a chance to get one right now. <laughs> Joe D said, I hate you. <laughs> How? I don't know. I don't, I'm not even using my Ethernet cable anymore. <laughs> Rest in peace. Missed it. Dang. Let's go, Crypto Cade. Yeah, Paz, you still got two days in a row. That's not like you, Paz. <laughs> You're usually on the ball, my man. Knight Rider got one on drop. Let's go. Pokali said, whoa, I got a 29,500. <laughs> That's high. Yeah, you know what? That's a high mint. But what tends to happen is if it's a high mint, a lot of the times you may get that ultra rare, that you know rare or even secret rare. Because it's really, really super rare and very unlikely that you get a low mint and it's one of those high rarities, like a secret rare, ultra rare. So I always say if you have, you know, a high mint, your chances are more likely for that to be an ultra rare, or secret rare type thing. Oh, Josh just hit the lottery. <laughs> Not quite, but definitely a good one. A 5,053 mint, that's a low mint, definitely. Sub 10K. Now this one, you know, I'd say when you get low mints, it's just a higher likely chance that it's a common. But you never know. I've got a couple low mints that end up being a rare lately. So it could be a rare, ultra rare. Who knows? Hopefully it's that secret rare for you. Miss Wonder Woman as well. Okay. Wonder Woman was tough to get. It really is unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> Yuda. Yuda Israel. It's crazy you get every drop. Most people get none. Six months, one drop. You know, that's why I start streaming and I really start doing these drops because I felt like if I can just help people at least walk them through my mindset, like my mentality of what I'm thinking on these drops and how it's working for me, I feel like at least if I can help a few people, you know, it's worth it. So unfortunate that you still haven't gotten one, Yuda. I wish there was like something I was able to do to really help you uh, get one. <laughs> 
my ultra rare Marvel number one mint was 53,000 or something. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense, Josh, just because, you know, I've seen people luck out and get like a 1000 or even a three digit ultra rare. Right. But it's just, it's unlikely that that happens because those mint numbers are ran all the way through. It's why I think, you know, a low, low mint secret rare will be worth a lot just because it's super rare. They don't even make them basically. Um, so there's people that do have those three digit Marvel number ones, secret rare. Those are going to be big money, I think, for sure. Even the three digit Marvel comics number one, I think people are going to be shocked and surprised how much money those three digits go for. Got one on the four. Wow, the four minute rebound. Let's go, energy. So again, the next one, I guess, was going to be at 11 08 Eastern time. So every four minutes. Rolanda got one. Let's go. Yeah, higher man's probably just a better chance. But again, Josh, hopefully you lucky out and that low man ends up being a ultra rare. Hugh, Hugh, is that a yes, yes, December? Does that mean you got one? I'm going to guess no. Yeah, I got nothing. Hey, I don't know. For some reason, anytime the drops are so smooth, December does, gets the short end of the stick and does not get one. But like the, those Disney drops... It was rough for like everybody, and then and then December's like you know got one. <laughs> I don't know how it works out like that. Borat's getting rebounds, so yeah, it is the four minute rebound. Yo, you know what's crazy? I don't know why you said that. Years of Mario Party prime me for these drops. Coffee Gate, Saggy Dot. I'm a Mario Party legend. <laughs> like Mario Party on the N64, and then Mario Kart. Like that was my childhood, um, along with you know James Bond. Uh, that's why I love James Bond. But Golden Eye, Mario Kart, and Mario Party. So I guess it was mini games, is what you're talking about, right? Like tapping the A or B for some of those. I agree, actually. That's inc that's crazy that you mentioned that. So five minutes after the drop. So I would definitely say if you didn't get one, guys, and you're still, I'm, I'm just gonna tap it a few times, see what happens. I'm going to tap it at like, let's see if I can get one on, on the lot. Cause it's almost 11 to wait. I haven't got a rebound in literally months. So I just want to see if this works on, on stream. So like it's 11 or seven Eastern time right now. I would say in another minute is when everyone's saying you can get a rebound. I thought that one went through. <laughs> you probably have about 100,000 people just tapping this like right now. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. All right, so I'm going to stop now. But that's basically what you do. I mean, if you really want that collectible, that comic, don't give up, right? I mean... I've got the uh, the Bart Simpson skateboard that way on Disney. Thanks to Res Loan. He was like, dude, rebounds are still happening. Don't give up. And, uh, oh, man, yeah, Paz, you're struggling today, man. I mean, nothing you can do about, th about that, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, when after you actually get your collectible, for anyone that doesn't know what that means, the buy now button's still up for me. That's how I'm able to try to go for a rebound. But sometimes you just are on the short end of the stick. You know, you get unlucky. And that buy now button basically is unclickable. And you can try to go back out and then come back in and keep doing that. And hopefully it pops back up. But if that buy now button becomes like not clickable, then you're kind of out of luck at that point. You can try to refresh and hope it pops up. But ideally, you know, you like to see that buy now button still clickable. Stefan struck out today. You got an LA. Got one on rebound though, Colin. Let's go. Yeah, right, Paz. I'm surprised. He you know, he's been doing pretty well lately. But I guess the last couple, he's uh, taken an L, taken an L recently. Brendan, you were quiet, man. I knew he was grinding. I think that's why Brendan was quiet in the chat today. I think Brendan was grinding. He needed a Doc Ock. Glad he got one on the rebound. Let's go. <laughs> oh, the bull, he snagged one. Let's go. Yeah, that's right. I haven't even tweeted out anything yet. Let's go. Jojo Bean got one on the rebound. Cole in.
Wow, shout out to Khaki Gaijin. Gaijin. This is some of the uh, the art he did this year. Isn't this awesome? Come on, this has to focus up. This is amazing, actually. That's like... Uh... <laughs> oh, what's his name? How can I not think of his name right now? With the everydays. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking out right now. Both over 10K editions so far. This has been a rough week. Geo, hopefully the next week, you know, it gets a lot better for you. Because that's the thing about Vivi, you know, you could have a really rough week, a couple days, and even a rough month. But all it takes is that one drop, you know, to change that whole trajectory, just kickstart everything. And you can go on a run, a huge run, and it can change everything. Like for me, that was Comic Con in season two. Up until that, I was struggling big time on drops. I was spending so much money in the marketplace, and then that happened, and it completely changed everything. I felt like I became the drop king. <laughs> no, Vivi booted you. Is a lower mint better or worse? Good question, Rolando. So a lower mint is definitely better. So, for example, if you have comic book number 500, that's going to be very valuable compared to comic book number 25,000, right? And so also what matters too big time is the rarity. So don't just throw away a rarity that's like an ultra rare if it's a high mint because I think the rarity will matter a lot too. But I just think that low mints, no matter what the rarity, will be big time valuable for sure. Wow. Okay. So you got to capture at six minutes. Got a high mint, Brendan, but just happy you got one. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone dropping L, not for the drop. But an honor of JD's loss is coming week in fantasy football. Let's go. <laughs> Shout out to you, APB. You know, APB is getting his last little trash talk in before he loses this week. That's basically what's happening. <laughs> Cole, and yes, sir. No go for me. But after not missing this time, tried for the first and second rebound. No go, Johnny. <laughs> Nicole said, no go for me after. Not missing this time. Tried for first and second rebound. No go. Johnny, I love how you already know right after you press the button that you got one or not. <laughs> it's the experience that pays off. I mean, sometimes you can kind of feel when it goes through smoothly. And then when, you know, you're probably going to get an error screen or sometimes, you know, you get an error screen right away. It just says all sold out and you're just out of luck that way. But I feel like for the most part now, I can kind of tell if it goes through or not sometimes i'm wrong but today i was right and hopefully now i'm just hoping for a good mint definitely take a picture of it and uh <laughs> take a picture of it and tag me on the twitter tristan wow that's crazy a 20 minute rebound can you imagine too if you get a a rebound that's like a secret rare 30 minutes after the drop Wow, let's go, Billy Bob. Billy Bob Bitcoin. After seven months, I actually got one. That's big time. That's an amazing feeling. If you still have the buy now button, it all just depends on how much you really want that collectible. You know, if you really want that comic book or collectible, whatever it is, I would keep trying. I mean, there's people I've gotten a rebound when there's 11 minutes after the drop before someone said they got into rebound 28 minutes after the drop i don't know if brendan was serious or not i mean he was probably serious i've seen rebounds happen pretty far after the drop so it all depends just uh you know how much you really want that because you really want it i would say don't give up if you see that buy now button like i think mine's still there <laughs> yeah mine's still there so like if this was something if this was like a tiger woods drop right and i didn't get one on the drop you can bet I probably would not have been saying anything on live stream right now, and I would just be tapping this for the next 30 minutes. So it just depends, you know, how much you actually want that. 
collectible. It's important not to back out because once you back out, like I just checked because I'm not going to keep trying for rebounds. And the buy now button obviously is gone and this is one pending order. So it just goes to show, you know, once you back out, <laughs> that's a wrap and you're probably not going to be able to get that rebound. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. <laughs> Geo said, I right, effing live, just got a 12-minute rebound. Let's go. I can kiss you, Johnny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yawn. If he be going to be yawning when he uh, takes that L, he's going to be like, what happened? All my Omi's gone. <laughs> Got on eight rebound. Yeah, for some reason, so every four minutes. So, like, right now, 16, 11, 16, you could probably get one. Geo, that's big time, though. I'm glad you finally got one. That's huge. A sub 10K mint is big. You know, it, they're like tiers. Think of them as, as, like, tiers, right? Everyone always asks, like, is a 7K mint good? Like the way I think of things is like if you can get, you know, a sub 100, a lot of these comic books, it's impossible, right? But for collectibles too, I'm saying if you can get a sub 100, that's like the first top tier. And then for a lot of these comics, it's if you can get a three digit sub 500, that's like the first tier for a lot of them. Then it's, I look at, you know, sub 1000 is the, that would be like the third tier, the third best one you can get. And then sub 5K and then sub 10K. I would rank it like that. So, you know, a lot of people, they don't have the money to go for that sub 100 or you know, it can get pretty expensive pretty quick. So sometimes, you know, the budget, it can only afford a sub 10K for whatever the collectible is. And, I, and that's just the way I look at things. Because you got to remember, too, once these are all listed and it's all interoperable, maybe years down the road, however long it takes, once everything's interoperable, when things are listed, say on OpenSea or IMX, Immutable X, you're obviously going to be able to filter it by rarities, but it's probably going to be listed as, you know, for example, like right away for the price, you know, you can filter it lowest first, but by addition number, a lot of them are going to be just by default, either by the price or by the addition number too. And so that's why I think once these are all interoperable, people aren't going to want to go pay for a very expensive high mint unless it's a special mint the year that it was founded or the year that a first appearance occurred or something like that. But that's why I think those low mints are going to be super important. Calvin got three rebounds. Let's go. Wow. Wes, I appreciate you big time. Appreciate you big time for that super chat, my man. Wes said everything you've predicted with VV eight months ago seems to be coming true. It's honestly unbelievable, my man. Like, it seemed kind of like I was just talking out my butt, right? Like saying crazy moon boyish examples, but it really just felt like destiny. It felt like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be just motivating, inspiring people to not sell their collection, to not give up because there was a lot of negative FUD in the summer, right? People, a lot of people sold the whole collections. It wasn't moving as fast as what people wanted it to move. I just saw the big picture from the very beginning. I don't know why or what it was, but I just saw... It was almost like this is what I wanted to do my whole life. And Vivi found me at like the perfect time in my trajectory of life, everything. at the We just met at the perfect time, right? It was like destiny. And I saw the vision that this company wanted to go in the very beginning. And so I tried my best to just spread the word to as many people as possible what I saw. And the fact that a lot of this is coming true this early, it's just mind blowing. It really is just mind blowing. And I'm just happy to be a part of it and just be along for the ride now and do everything I can. Just keep helping out. Um, appreciate you big time, Wes, because it's been a crazy ride and we're just beginning still. I mean, back in March, I was telling people there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people on this app. And then some people believed and, you know, a lot of people didn't. But now I'm telling people there's going to be tens of millions of people in this app. <laughs> like. It's going to happen. I mean, we already have a million active users right now. And so can you only imagine by the end of 2022? 
I'm thinking we're going to have five to 10 million active users easily. I'm thinking more so 10 million by the end of 2022. Real talk, will you be attending any comic or collectible events with VV? Hey, definitely, definitely, definitely. So there's nothing planned just yet, but I think over time, definitely some uh, some events will be happening. I think there will be something in 2022. Uh, I think there is something happening in February, right? I definitely want to attend more events too, like that Comic Con. Really upset that I wasn't able to go to that. Everybody who went there looked like they had a blast. You know, definitely would have been a great time if I could have went to that. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. I mean, Kelvin just said rebounds are real. Oh, my God. So when you're going for rebounds and you've never gotten one before, it literally feels like it's impossible and it's a waste of time. You're just hitting that buy now button, getting the error screen, and you're like, what am I doing? Like, this doesn't happen. Until you get that first rebound, it feels like it's impossible. Once you get that first rebound, you're like, oh, my gosh, this is actually real. <laughs> like, So I, I completely understand that. It happened with me, for real. Hey, one of every comic, sub 3,000. So that's awesome. Like, You can create your own goals. That's an awesome goal right there. An awesome thing to have, an achievement. Like, Absolutely. Hey, Kelvin. Yeah, Calvin's on his grind right now. He told me that he's going to get a tie. And he said it in such a convincing way. I have no doubt in my mind that Calvin's going to get there. <laughs> it is a love story. Johnny Dunn and Vivi. Because it happened at such a crucial time in my life, too, to where I could have taken a, you know, a career job teaching right after college, moved out of my house, like your normal, normal route, right? Work your nine to five come a teacher, take my, you know, 50 K before taxes and all that. But I felt like since I got my degree and everything, that's my backup plan. I can do that when I feel like I'm ready to do that. Be one of those teachers to motivate, inspire those kids to say, I never gave up. Like I, I tried going after my dream. I tried this. I tried that. I, I kept going. And I felt like such a hypocrite to teaching right away. And I, when I still have all these goals and I'm not going after them. So that's why I made the move to quit teaching for the time being. And, you know, just go all in on my passions. I was still trying to play baseball. Uh, I created a business out of just an idea. I started making music, trying to do something with golf. And then I found Vivi. So it was like for the past decade, all these little bumps in the road, everything that I did led me to finding Vivi at the most crucial and perfect time. <laughs> APB said he's an alien that lives on that lives on in a spaceship, but he hates flying. So I don't know how that works. See, the difference is like when you're in the spaceship, you don't feel flying. You know, it's anti-gravity. So you just get there automatically. When you're in these like little human planes, you feel everything, the turbulence and all that. <laughs> Keep the tissue for your tears. That's a fact. That's absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. You just got to bring something that can sign. That's all you got to do. That's actually a good question. Lazarus said, anyone have any issues with the CAPTCHA? I got the drop of the CAPTCHA froze and I lost it. I haven't had any issues with the CAPTCHA. I've only got a CAPTCHA a few times. Um, but today I got one. Today was a harder, pretty hard one. I mean, some of the pictures did not look like boats at all. <laughs> um but interesting that it froze and you lost it. That's unfortunate to hear, Lazarus. Um, I know some people have had that happen when they try to load gems, like not preload gems. It's it's frozen on them. But haven't heard anybody had issues with the capture yet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. CryptoCon. So he said, Johnny, where's the love for the highs, mint? I mean, the very last mint in existence seems pretty valuable. Absolutely. So I talked about those low mints. I would say the high, the last, last edition, that's so important. So I would, that's not a low mint, obviously, but I would put that in the category as like a special mint. Special mints are like anything that has importance or value that's not a low mint, basically. Like 
I talked about like the first appearance of a character. Maybe it's like 1972 or something. And you have that edition number or like for me, I have the 2003 Tokidoki Metallo. Now it's obviously a Tokidoki. It's not the biggest brand in the world, but Tokidoki was founded in 2003. So I felt like that min number had a lot of significance to it. So something like this too, I would definitely say, absolutely. If you, if there was 10,000 editions, and you have the 10,000 edition number, you have the last possible edition. That's going to be big time. Um, so definitely CryptoCon. That's my love for the highest mint. I don't have one, actually. I would love to have the highest mint, the very last one possible of a collectible. Vivi Las Vegas, do you use special equipment for YouTube videos? I'd love to get started. So not really at all. I mean, use me as motivation and inspiration. If you have the slightest bit of want or urge to make a YouTube channel, make one. I got to 2,000 followers or whatever. Okay, I was going to say in no time, but that's that would be a lie. In 2018, I started with one subscriber myself. I had a YouTube channel for a little bit, but I didn't start making content until 2018. I had one subscriber. And it was myself. Start, start making music videos. I was doing like vlogs and everything. Got up to just under 1,000 subscribers, like 990 something, right before I found Vivi. So from 2018, 19, 20, 21, you know, that pretty good amount of years, all the way up to 1,000 subscribers. So it took a while. Once I, once the Vivi happened, the community rocket ship. I'm at like 2.4 something right now. And so when you start making things about what you really love, in a community that's just beginning like vivi you're gonna grow like crazy las vegas um i'll support you the whole community will support you making youtube videos i'll repost you when you make your first one like that's the thing i try to you know really show a lot of love to anyone else just starting out making content the only special things i have i would say i have like a little bit of a better webcam that i bought than the one that comes on my laptop but obviously you can tell it's not like a crazy hd camera <laughs> like it's just a little bit more expensive webcam than the default one on my laptop um i use a program called Streamyard, and the microphone this is actually an expensive microphone i started with a 30 dollar microphone I started with a 30 dollar mic for the longest time but well, this one was a 300 dollar one i got for music i'm just using for these uh live streams, podcasts, whatever you want to call it. But you don't need a $300 mic. You can get a cheap $50, $30 mic from Amazon. Hook it up. But definitely use me as motivation. If I can start a YouTube channel, anybody can start a YouTube channel. That's the way I always looked at life too. If I saw somebody doing something, I would always say, well, why can't I do that? And that's the same mindset that you guys should have too. If you see me doing something, you should look at it and be like, well, then you can do it too. <laughs> Yo, Brennan is still grinding. Let's go. Brennan, I really hope you get a rebound on 28 minutes. I'm going to repost some people. Hey, you call me truther. Looks like I can cr congratulate myself for a change today. I got two today with no capture. Wow. Okay. El has got nothing. Let me uh scroll down. Philly Perez got two. Awesome story, bro. Nicole, I'm sorry you did not get a rebound. I do love Tokidoki. They kind of grew on me big time. A lot of people are still trying for the rebounds. Oh, Brendan, that's big time. The last mint of those. That's big. Plus, you know what, Brendan? I mean, we don't know when the transfer to IMX is going to happen, right? Immutable X. But we know it's close. And so those artist collectibles, especially from Decon, you know, on Immutable X, I think that'll be big. Having the those low mints, special mints, or the last ones in the, in the whole edition, I think that'll be big.
My man, my man, APB. 44 people in the chat right now. 32 likes on the video. Hit that like button so, and show some love to the BB mayor. Let's go. Now, nah, Brandon, definitely not too late, my man. Saying it's too late to make a YouTube channel is like saying it's too late to get into VV. Um, I know it may feel like it's late and everything like that. You could have got in, you know, made a YouTube channel in April, but <laughs> should have struck while the iron was hot. Make a YouTube channel now, my man. Definitely make a YouTube channel. If you make a YouTube channel right now today, you can bet that all the influencers will support you. You can bet because, I mean, you support all of us, so... What can we expect from this weekend's drop? So, Nicole, actually, Reese, I don't know if you tune into the Woman of Vivi. They just did a interview interview the other day. Let me see if I can find it. I might try to put that link in my description because it was a good one. Shout out to the Woman of VV and Reese. They talked a lot about, I think, this weekend. They just gave some little teasers about a possible anime drop. Some kind of something to do with anime this weekend, looks like. And if you want to check it out, Reese and Women of Vivi. I'm going to put the link in my bio right now. So if you guys want to check that out, you can definitely click the link in the bio. I'm going to make a thumbnail real quick. For this, all right. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would say the only other thing that I really paid for is like the little bit of lighting and stuff like that in the background. Um, I just went to the Walmart or Target. They were cheap, like $10 little lights. <laughs> so that's the only thing. Ah, uh, Robbie, 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 Robbie. He said, I'm sick as a dog from the third booster injection. Failed on the drop, so going back to bed. Feel better, my man. Feel better, my, my man, Rob. Sorry you didn't get one today. Today was definitely a more popular one. I feel like there was a lot of demand for it. Have a good one, though, brother. Sleep tight. Have a good one. Hey, John Khalif. Hey, hey, Johnny Doe. <laughs> wow, John Khalif, where are you from, my man? He said it's 3.28 a.m. here, and I missed it. That's dedication right there. All right, so let's see if the market is open. Market usually opens 30 minutes after the drop. We had that issue the other day with the AWS servers. But it looks like it's a little better now. Price prediction for this drop on the common. Ooh. Again, I don't feel strongly about this one. But I think it's going to start out pretty cheap. And then I think it's going to definitely increase in price a lot. Like I think this is the one where... The floor is going to be hard to buy. So where if you don't lock one in, it could keep going up a little bit. I don't know what it's going to rise up to right away. I think it's going to depend on when we get these details for the, this weekend's drop. Like I was saying earlier, if, we, if the details are showing that this drops huge this weekend, I think it's going to limit the upside on these commons right away in the short term. But if we get the details that it's just a cool drop this weekend, nothing like crazy, crazy big. I think that's going to help the upside for these commons in the short term a lot. Let me check the market again. It's still closed. Still closed. Still closed. Drew Seller got two off the rebound. Let's go. Colton Rhodes says, so even though I got a 20K mint, it could be better than a common. That's kind of the debate right now. Um, I would say it all depends on the low mint common that you're comparing it to. It could be a 20k mint secret rare, and then right now in the marketplace, that would have more value than a common. But I, I don't know how that's going to work in the future. I think in the future, these 
secret rare since it has such a low edition number like 500 maybe 250 or 600 editions super super low to where it's easy to set that floor really high up so i think in the short term the secret rares are probably gonna have the highest floors out of any of them just because it's so much easier to set that floor at a certain price right but i think over time the ones that are gonna be selling the most might end up being the low super low mint commons the ones that have the actual cover as a secret rare so or the same cover as the ones in the physical world so a lot of some of these secret rares actually do have the same cover in the physical world i think house of x is one of them that secret rare i believe has the same cover as the one in the physical world but i think over time these low mint commons on the marvel comics number one the fantastic four number one the Sp amazing spider-man number one like you know the holy grail comics the low low mint the sub 500 the sub 1000 i think those are gonna be big time but of course too i mean the floors are gonna be crazy high on the secret rares low mint secret rares are gonna be big big money i think we got a punch in the building how we doing my man no luck on the drop or rebound today no i am gonna stay live for sure i'm gonna stay live i don't think it's gonna be the same issue today as yesterday like with the aws servers i think the market will open up like really soon in a may ish correct 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 punch said good to see you, my dude i was in the uh, vv vault a hey, appreciate you big time and shout out to him too with his live streams nicole okay thank you johnny this is actually a good little tip that they could use. Maybe a little feedback tip. I may suggest it to them. This is actually a good one from Borat47. He said, I wish they could send out a notification or tweet to say the market is open. Waiting about can get tiring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now they will. I think yesterday they did tweet saying the market is open just because of that delay that they had with the AWS server. But I think we'll get to a point where a lot of these notifications come from the VV app. I think we'll get to a point to where who knows, maybe we could see, you know, their interviews or AMAs done on the VV app. Could you imagine that? Now that would take some development time, right? It's not going to happen in the next couple of weeks, obviously, but maybe sometime at the end of the next year, they get that social platform on the app really tuned to that next level to where I think people will start slowly drifting away from their current social medias. And the, the community will start to thrive on that VV app. But as you guys see right now, the social feed, it's not perfect yet. The algorithm's not there yet. But I did hit one, my man. I did hit one. But I did not get mine delivered yet. <laughs> Daniel Remus said, Johnny, remind everyone to call me VV got to deal with the government. <laughs> That's a fact. That is a fact. And that's something that people do forget, right? I mean, not every day is your NFT platform partnering with the U.S. government. I mean, it's kind of unheard of to where it seems too good to be true. But Ecomi, I think, may be one of, if not the only, crypto technology company that's partnered with the U.S. government. I mean, if that doesn't just scream bullish and long term, then I don't know what else will or or does because that's legendary right there. Vivi is the best app ever. <laughs> oh, the wife got a 373. That's big time. Common. Nice shooter. Yeah, that's a good one right there. That's that's a holy grail. That that's a big time comic right there. Because not only is it a low mint, like a sub 500. You have a pretty solid number too. It's a three seven three, something that can be read back and forth. <laughs> I forget what that uh, what that terminology is. I do live in the U.S. I do East Coast. I'm more of like a West Coast vibe, though. I would say warm weather, but I live on the East Coast. I would actually give this away, hundred percent. Hey JD, three month Disney Plus subscription giveaway. I would give this away. I actually don't have mine yet. So I got to figure out, you know, how do I get mine so I can give it away? How to high ping. 
that's still a solid common uh common comic book to get on the drop you know sub 5k of a good comic Ooh. Would you rather have a three digit ultra rare or a five digit secret rare comic? This is tough right now. I'd probably go with the four or a five digit. Oh, I mean, I'll probably still go with this. I'm leaning secret rare on this one. I think it all depends on the comic book, though. I think it's hard to just lay this as like a blanket cover. If it was a blanket cover, I would lean Secret Rare. Um, but I think it all depends on the comic itself. Three-digit common. Now, the question was a three-digit common versus a five-digit Secret Rare. This is actually a tough one, too. I mean, this is kind of the big debate, right, in the whole community world right now, comic NFT world. Now, me personally, I would rather have the three-digit common, especially if it was a sub-500. Now, that's just my personal taste, my personal want. But if I wanted to try to time it right, it may be better off having that five-digit secret rare right now while the prices are crazy high. Selling that secret rare, then you can buy that three-digit common and still have tons of gems left over so like i would say it depends on how you want to do it but i think for me it's a tough one i mean i don't think you can go wrong either way i'm buying secret rare 1.5 the 1.7k is the market open right now or are you just saying that's what you would buy the secret rare for I think the secret rare will start out that price. Around that price. Let's go. James Freeling said, yo, Johnny, I got myself two. My brother, one rebound and my girlfriend got one. 249. That's a big one, my man. Congrats. Congrats. That's a huge one. 249 right there. A sub 300 minute. That is big time. Do you have any physical collections? I do. So this is actually my first one that I ever bought. Let's go, Todd gang. So this is actually the first physical collectible I ever bought. Bought that because of Vivi, obviously. I said, you know what? This is when I only had one of them at the time, I think. And I was like, you know what? If I ever sell this one, which I'll never sell my last Todd, obviously. But at the time, like March, April, I was like, if I ever sell the digital Todd, I want a physical one to remember for the rest of my life. So that's why I got it. And then a little bit later, I was like, you know what? I got the Rizzo too. <laughs> so I got that one right after I got the digital NFT Rizzo. And I was like, I have the first ever, or I should say, I have the last 100, number 100 Batman of that collection, the Todd, which is the first one ever on Vivi. I need to finish that physical you know, collection with the first ever Batman, the, the Rizzo. So I got both of them. Plus, you can see like the Funkos in the back too. I got some of just my favorite characters like Lil Wayne, Alan Iverson, Big E, Tupac, Tiger Woods. You got Jack Nicholas upstairs. A uh, bunch of Biggie ones. Uh, Mike Trout, <laughs> Babe Ruth. <laughs> I was like, they. I didn't even know they had some of the Funkos and of some of these people. Hey, I didn't realize that over there. I got to start tuning into some of those uh, videos, some of those live streams. Hey, that's awesome. Appreciate you, Vivi Las Vegas. Look, come to your live. It's more personal. I mean, I think the great thing about Vivi in general, the whole community, is there's something for everyone, right? I mean, we've grown this community now to where it's actually like a real thing. <laughs> it's not just a made up buzzword that, you know, all these NFT projects use. Oh, come here for the community, right? I mean, Vivi is kind of completely different. It's actually a real thing. There's so many different avenues. There's so many different influencers. You you can pick and choose or support them all or find something where you feel like, you know, you're, you're comfortable at. And it's just great because there's, there's something for everyone now. 
Green Goblin is only like six hundred dollars. Yeah, so I think a lot of these comic books, especially the secret rares of these big characters, there's like hype at first, but then the next drop happens and people move on. The real, real true collectors, I don't think are really here yet. And whether that's, you know, designed on purpose or accident, I think it's kind of tailored on purpose. And the reason why I thought about this in the beginning was we had a lot of people from crypto kind of joining the VV app in the beginning. And over the summer, people were wondering, like, why is it that there's a lot of flippers? And I think the VV team is so genius to where they targeted the crypto community kind of at first to create a marketplace. Because, you know, most people in crypto space anticipate things to happen right away, you know, quick. So they see VV is kind of moving slow. A lot of flippers in the space to where it creates that marketplace. If they targeted your hardcore Batman collectors, your hardcore just comic collectors, there would be no marketplace, <laughs> right? Their drop would happen and everybody would collect and hold. But the fact that they have a lot of flippers, it creates that marketplace. The way I looked at it was like Vivi's kind of dangling this digital fruit in front of all the flippers, <laughs> right? And so I think the people who hold long term are definitely going to be rewarded. I'm really far down. Let me uh, catch up a little bit. Wow, let's go. Secret Rare. This is a good one to get a Secret Rare one. Big time. Congrats, Digital. I, I'm glad somebody on the live stream got one. Yeah, so let me get to this question. I was trying to skip through, but this is a good one. Um, so Stefan said, can you explain why NFTs will be important in the future? Absolutely. So I think a lot of times people are kind of going to tangent too. I think from the outside looking in, people see NFTs right now and see that people are spending, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on random NFT projects. And people on the outside are looking at that and saying, What's happening? NFTs are a fad. Like, that's not going to keep happening. But what I realized was in this space that we're in, no, NFTs are not the fad. I don't think. I don't think NFTs are a fad. I think NFTs will be here forever. I think what the fad is, people spending hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on random NFT projects just because it's an, a new NFT. I think a lot of that money will funnel into premium licensed NFTs from these big brands because at the end of the day, it's like our famous word, Premium licensed digital collectibles. It's not just a random NFT, right? Just because it's rare. Like I always <laughs> use the example of like, I could crumple up this piece of paper, attach a utility to it, and it's a one of one piece of paper, right? I mean, you could have 10,000 of Batman, but everyone knows the value of the IP of Batman. So that's the difference right there of like random NFT projects and then the premium licensed ones because you can attach real world utility to these you know, premium licensed NFTs. So that's kind of the shift that I see happening. A lot of times people from the outside think it's a fad. I don't think it's a fad. I think NFTs will be here forever because we're only moving into the digital world more and more and more. Meaning, you know, physical collectibles, I think will still be a thing, but I look at it like physical CDs. People, you know, years ago said physical CDs will be here forever. Digital music streaming is a fad. And so what we learned is, no, that's not a fad at all. That's going to be here forever. It's just music streaming just, you know, happens instantly. When you save people time, it's gold. And so you're saving people time with digital streaming, with music. You don't have to worry about shipping out CDs, the physical cost of that. And so the same thing's happening with toys, physical toys, physical collectibles. Think of how much money Marvel, Disney is saving without having to ship physical products anywhere, without having to manufacture physical toys. Vivi is like a distribution platform that distributes everything instantly. So it's game changing. And I think NFTs are so important too because we're moving more and more into the digital world. Facebook just changed their name to Meta. Soon people are gonna be wearing these augmented realities daily. It may take a couple of years for that to happen like on a mainstream level. But it will happen. We will move into that digital world more and more and more. So building up your digital assets or digital collectibles, gearing up, preparing for a digital world that we're all living in right now 
even more immersive soon. I think it's going to be really important. I hope that kind of answers your question. I don't think all NFTs will be important. Like I was saying in the beginning, I think and if a lot of people on the outside think NFTs are a fad, what we learned or I learned in this, in the midst of it all, NFTs are going to be here forever. What I think the fad is people spending those millions of dollars on random NFTs. But again, I think those, you know, projects on OpenSea, amazing for those independent artists who are maybe not have that famous following just yet. And it's good for those ones that do have the famous followings because it eliminates the middleman. You know, all the fans get to buy your artwork and that money goes straight to the artist, the creator itself. So again, I think those open sea projects are amazing for those artists. Secret Rare is definitely a lot more points too for the Master Collector program. <laughs> My hair is wet. Hey, appreciate you big time. Wait till you guys see my hair when it's down. You guys won't believe I'm the same person. Are the Secret Rares OG covers? I don't know about this one. I know for the most part, the Secret Rares are like the covers that Marvel made up for Vivi. Sometimes though, they are real covers. I'm not sure on this one what the Secret Rare is. Wow, let's go. So mine just got delivered. <laughs> let's go. So I got a rare. This is amazing. So I was hoping for the ultra rare, but again, I'm not mad about that one. The rare looks just like the ultra rare, but just in black and white. Market is still down, but let's go. Yep. Oh, Res Lone struck out today. Dang, Rez. Rez, I feel like you've been striking out and you're due for a big one. Rez is going to come on here and say he got an ultra rare one day. <laughs> I'm going to have to check Twitter and hope, uh, hope there is no delay. Hey, good point, JD. I did an NFT project myself on OpenSea just to have fun since I'm not famous, no marketing and no expertise in digital design. I sold zero and they're all one of one. Hey, I might have to go support you, Kelvin. If anyone wants to go support Kelvin and his OpenSea project, might have to go check that out. Hey, Rez, I do have a Discord. Yep. Um, I'll add you to my whitelist. Hey, appreciate you big time, my man. Rare gang. I don't have any mods just yet. Do not have any mods just yet. Hey. Can't believe I got the rare. Billy the Kid said, haven't had a drop since my first one. Been living in the secondary market lately. Keep trying, my man. Keep trying. Like I always tell people, it only takes one drop to get to really start the trajectory of, you know, getting on time, getting those drops consistently. <laughs> no mods yet. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact, Kelvin. But let me know, Billy the Kid, when did you start? When was your first one? Has it been like months since you got one? A couple weeks? I know a lot of people have been struggling lately, but hopefully that luck can change for you, my man. Market's still down, still down. Let me be a mod. Got some people, you know, in the works. Got some people that are definitely be good mods, I think, that have been showing support, loyal for a while now. And I think that will be coming soon for sure. So I will have to put out a way to, uh, you know, I got a couple people right now, but I think, you know, the more people that want to be willing to be mods, might have to make some room for them too. Appreciate you big time. We got Kelvin. He's been wanting to be a mod for a while. We 
Reslo, is this for your open sea project? Riley Smith, it's been about a month since he's got a drop, just a few rebounds. Luckily, you got a few rebounds at least. I know for me, I haven't got a rebound. I think Disney was my last time I got a rebound. And before that, it was months. I mean, shout out to Reslone again. He was the one who told me, you know, rebounds are still a thing. Keep trying for that skateboard. I was able to lock one in, luckily. But it's definitely been hard to get a drop because you got to think pre Disney, we had about, I think, 50,000 active users on drop day going for a drop. So, yeah, you can think, you know, 30,000 editions of a comic sellout quick because there's 50,000 people on drop day. But fast forward to today, post Disney. I think we have like close to probably 350 to 400,000 people active on drop day, a million active users. So, you know, 30,000 additions is not a lot anymore. Hey, okay. Resolution got a new project coming out. See, Spill, I got a rare today. I was lucky. <laughs> Last night, I was telling myself, I'm going to get a rare, but then I changed my mind and said, I'm going to get an ultra rare. I tried manifesting that because I love the way the colors look, but I guess I had in my mind. Let's go. Market is open. So the common's already at $30. Down to 23 Uncommon, $100. <laughs> There's only six in the market. So be careful, you know. The rare is $130. The ultra rare, 399 Any secret rares? There's eight. 3K. So it started out a little bit higher than I thought. But again, be careful, you know, buying these. When you see there's only eight or something like that in the marketplace because there's still a lot more to get delivered. So I'm not telling you to buy or not to buy. I'm just saying, be careful because a lot of times when you see something start out, as say for the commons, I think they started out at 40 or $30. There's only 64 in the marketplace right now. So as there's, you know, 500 delivered, a thousand more delivered, a lot more people are going to put them in the marketplace, which tends to drop down the price. And then it tends to be an opportunity to buy. But again, not financial advice. Things don't always happen as usual. I remember when JD told me the first time that it, it only takes one drop to change your life. And my first drop, I got the Daredevil Secret Rare. No joke. <laughs> wow. Super grateful I did not quit BB. That's amazing, Kelvin. That's amazing right there. I remember that too. See, it really does. I mean... That's an extremely great comic book, too. Did the Wonder Woman make history being a common and topping an ultra rare? Has another one did that? A common topping the ultra rare? We've seen a lot of times the common flip different rarities, the uncommon, the rare. I'm not sure if we've had a common flip the ultra rare. I thought Ty was going to flip Rizzo quicker than what it's about to do, I think. Hey, appreciate you big time. 2024. I really haven't tried rebounds on live for that long. Like the only time I try rebounds is just for a few minutes like that. Um, I haven't really tried, been that dedicated to the rebounds, to be honest, brother. Especially if I already got one on the drop, I feel like I'm not going to spend another 10 minutes on live trying to get another one while people are trying to at least get one i feel like that doesn't really sit well with people unless it's something i really really want if it's a comic book or you know a tiger woods collectible or something that i really really wanted then you would see me on live even if after i got one probably for a good 10 minutes trying to get one yep market is open oh no for 800 see i mean this is not the comic book that you want to sell too low. This is definitely a good one. Now, I see see like the commons are already down to $14. But I think that's going to go quick. I think once it's down there, I think the smart money will be buying them up. So if this is one that you want to get, I would definitely 
lock one in. Oh, no way. I just saw a steal. I was just too late. I saw a three-digit go for like 60 bucks. Oh, man. I almost just stole that one. That's kind of what I'm sitting here waiting for right now. I wanted three-digit for kind of cheap. Huge. Let's go. Ultra rare. That's big time, James. Let's go. Wow. So the board cube, I didn't notice. Let me check that, Nicole. Yeah, the board cube, the common was definitely under retail. I bought a couple when it was under retail. I noticed it was still there. I haven't checked. I just checked actually a couple of days ago. I was going to say I haven't checked recently. Someone sold for 700. Oh no. Hey, when Pokemon. Congrats on 10K. Twitter followers, Johanny. I hope everyone gets something good. And if not, something on the marketplace for a good price, definitely. So, yeah, it looks like the common Borg is just under 40 still, 38.90. But it has gone up a little bit. I said I would say, I think I saw it when it was like 34. So it's gone up a few bucks. People are definitely buying it. What's been happening lately is if I sell one collectible, even if something I have a duplicate of, people see that in the market and they think like, oh man, the top's here. Johnny's selling it. <laughs> like I'm not buying. So I'm like, no, oh my gosh. It almost makes me wish I had a second account to where I can sell something and people not know it's me. But like, for instance, I've, I've listed a couple things that I feel like normally would have sold instantly. But as soon as they see it's me selling it, it's got them questioning like, why is he selling it? Should I be buying this? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's probably because I have a ton of them and I just need the extra gems right now. <laughs> hey, James, you are and have been a great teacher on this Eve, on this BV journey, I think you mean. Appreciate you, James, big time. Absolutely. I think it's my teaching background that came in the fact. Because I, I mean, I did. I graduated college with a whole teaching degree, right? But I just felt like actually being a teacher... And there's nothing wrong with teaching. I know plenty of teachers that are, you know, incredibly happy with what they do. I think teaching is a great thing. I do want to be a teacher one day eventually, but just like not yet in my life. I feel like that's something I want to do later on when I'm a lot older. To be able to tell all these kids these crazy stories about how I never gave up and it ended up working out. Ah, okay. Gotcha. All right. Let me check out the rare. Good to see that the rare is moving a little bit. I think the common will follow probably. The ultra rare is up to 346. That's good to see. And the rare, yeah, it's up to 104. Wow, that's definitely good. Good morning, Gary. How we do today, Gary? All right, so am I seeing this right? Looks like the common's not almost 50 bucks now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 20, 24, 25. I think this common will be expensive. So if you can lock a common in, I mean. This is going to be a hard one to get. Everyone's buying them right now. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. This is not going to be an easy one to get. That's for sure. So 
Trying to snipe a low mint. Got a bounce back. That's huge. Nice little rebound. Let me go over the prices again because things are changing <laughs> quickly. <laughs> People are snatching up the comments right now as they come in the market. <clears throat> Just be careful again. But it looks like people are making a point to make sure, you know, it stays a pretty high amount. Marketplace is nuts. <laughs> it is. It's going crazy right now. Again, there's not many delivered. <clears throat> but commons are going wild. All right, so there's 116 in the market. It goes from 25 to 29 to 34, 39, 49, 50. 55, 70. <laughs> the uncommons, there's 92 in the market and it's 44. 51 in the market for the rare, up to 110. 46 in the market for the ultra rare, 320. 27 in the market for the secret rare, down to 2.2K. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to buy one. It's so hard. Dang. Why does everyone want the commons like me? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, all those ones below 70 are gone. Yeah, I think so too. So it's like a... That's why I always say like to scroll down because most of the time it's like a glitch in the marketplace. Like they're already bought. By the time you go click on it and try to hit buy now, it's probably already bought. Oh my gosh, I just so close to sniping a $40 one. Oh my gosh. Oh man, from Bobo016. Shout out to you, brother. How much just sniped one? Ooh. Oh my gosh, I wish I had 500 gems right now. There's a 227 in the marketplace right now for 500 gems. If you have 500 gems right now, I think this is a steal. Wow, that's not going to last long oh man let me show you yep it's gone shout out to any of you on stream if you pulled the trigger on that i just want to see a three digit pop up in my range oh man 40 I think Paz, like what's happening is maybe like a new user gets their first drop, gets a load load mint, and they don't even know the significance or importance yet. So that's the only downside, being like a new a new user. You don't really have the awareness yet of how much things are worth. It's unfortunate, but it happens, you know. So I'm so lucky that I got that rare. Man, I just want one to pop up. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think they may look at the mint number. They may not. Sniped it. Let's go. Cole in. Eh, which one do you snipe? There's some good ones to snipe, man. Absolutely. It's like if you hesitate, though, your chances could be gone.
So this is rare. There's only 2,350 editions of the rare. Rare Doc Ock. I almost wanted to flip it, sell it, and then use that money to buy a low-digit common. I hope that does not go through. All right, good. I was about to say I would have just wasted money right there. <laughs> that's the thing i mean no matter what it is it sells out instantly and then the secondary market fees the omi that's going to be burning like that's why there's so much omi burns constantly because you know that secondary market is active man it's just too expensive right now for me Oh, rare is moving up. Rare is moving up. That's a fact. All right. So commons, we got 188 in the market. Commons are going for 35 is the floor. Probably is not the actual floor though. Remember the uncommon 106 in the market, $74 floor. 52 in the market for the rare, 149 bucks. Wow. It's moving up big time. Ultra rare, 46 in the market, 325. Secret rare, 30 edition or 30 left in the market, 2.3K. Amazing Spider-Man 1 with all the mints that has being at 125 or whatever makes sense that Amazing Spider-Man 3 will be about half the price. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Makes sense. A lot of people thought too that this common would shoot up to about 60 bucks right away. And, and that's about what we're seeing right now. I would definitely say that's a good guess. Let's see. I'm going to go over the prices of Amazing Spider-Man 1. So Amazing Spider-Man 1, the commons 106. The uncommons 131. This is, again, Amazing Spider-Man 1. The, the rare is 338. The ultra rare is 610. And the secret rare is 8.5K. Again, that's Amazing Spider-Man number 1. Amazing Spider-Man number 3. Common. 32, but it really looks like maybe 55 or 63, something like that. Maybe 70 ish. Uncommon 73. See, I think people are waking up to these commons 150 for the rare. Yeah, the rare is moving up there. Ultra rare is 324. 2.3K for the secret rare. That was my buy target. Anything under 60 gems for the common. Yep, I agree. It's definitely a good uh, good price target. So we got another AMA tonight. I'm sorry, not tonight. Thursday at 3 p.m. P 
PT. So at 6 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, we got Vivi AMA. <laughs> so not live today, but tomorrow. I agree. Maybe some slight dips, but I definitely think long term this is gonna be a good one. Let me see. Uh, let's see what the rare is at. I actually just listed my rare. Listed it for 169. I'll tell you my strategy after I do it this time. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Jay's feeling says, do you think there's a rebound time limit? I've been trying to get one with my friend's phone for 40 minutes later, but no luck. I would say anything after 30 minutes, you could probably give up on it. Um, I don't know if there's a rebound time limit. I don't think it's anything confirmed yet. I think everybody's just kind of guessing. But once the, yeah, once the market opens up, I would say it's kind of the end of it. If the marketplace is open, it's probably safe to say that they're all sold out. Yeah, I agree. That's a good way to look at it, Paz. I know Brandon's just sniping those comments right now. <laughs> but that's the way I would look at it, uh, Jabes. Like, I would keep trying those rebounds until that market opens. It's a pretty safe way, safe bet, I would say. I kind of like that Doc Ock. Rare looking one a lot. I definitely would rather have the ultra rare one. But I'm glad I got one at least. I may actually. It's huge. Yeah, James, this is a great one to get a secret rare one. That's amazing. I think the cover is one of the best secret rares that we had, too. Uh, I got the rare at 100. Okay, okay. Solid, solid. That's a good price. I think that's definitely a good snag, Brendan. I think that Green Goblin rare one looks amazing. That cover. I think I'm about to snipe it. Not snipe it, but just grab any of them. So I really like that cover. I'm just going to hold it down. Not gonna splurge, you know. I really want that one cover. I'd rather hold the gems for now. <laughs> See, Spittle said, "Why are you? Why are you selling?" Because <laughs> there's another one that I want. I have something on my mind that I want. A lot of times, like I like to get rid of my higher mints. And then pay the difference in cost for the lower mints. But if you have the gems, then I think you should not sell. Absolutely. Not financial advice. (laughs) 
Secret Rare is going to be amazing, my man. It's kind of like frozen right now. I can't see the comics. 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 Market was open for me, but I'm trying to get back in now, and I can't see him for some reason. Let me know. Is the market open for you guys, too? Oh, man. That's the risky part about trying to make quick moves. If things don't work out as smoothly as you'd like, you can get, you know, on the wrong side of luck. <laughs> oh, let's go. It finally worked for me. I just got in. But, yeah, it's not working quite right. I think it's just going really, really slow. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, don't don't have too much of a worry uh, right now. Like for me, I just got into the app. I'm trying to load my listings and it's just going. So like that's a, kind of the downside at trying to make quick moves, right? Like someone asked, why am I selling? I was trying to let go of that rare comic for a decent price to hurry up and get something else. Oh, it might be working now. Yep, it's working again, guys. Definitely go check it out. Definitely back working. A little bit slow, but definitely better than the last couple of seconds. We crashed the app again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Hopefully mine got listed. Something in my price range. It's not looking like it. I lied. It is. I did just list um my rare. It's probably going to get bought too. Yeah, we massive. That's the thing. I mean, there's so much demand for VV right now. It's truly mind blowing. It's like the good problem and the bad problem, right? The good problem is VV's exploding. The bad problem is we can't get these drops. We can't get these collectibles in the app anymore. Definitely, definitely. The one big thing is it's all about gem management. A lot easier said than done. It's hard to keep a good amount of gems there. Take it, but when you're able to have gems available, you can take, you know, you're able to capitalize on opportunities at that point. Once you see opportunities in the market, you can capitalize on them right there. As opposed to, you might see something that's really cheap that's going to skyrocket in value, you think. But if you don't have the gems available for it, then, you know, you can't really buy that collectible that you want.
Oh my gosh, lag is killing me right now. <laughs> See, the rares are actually huge for Master Collector points, too. Definitely a good one to add for Master Collector points. But you have to weigh the, the benefits of how much is that worth compared to the collectible that you really, really want. Well, to comment at 55 before crash, still pending two deliveries, going to come back to a surprise. Hey, shout out to you, Brendan. You don't worry about not having collectibles for the point system when selling. Uh, what is it? What do you mean by that, my man? What do you worry? Or you don't worry about not having collectibles for the point system? Do you mean by a point system as like the master collector program? And I do. I do think that's going to be big time. That's why I just stacked up on all my sets. Like, I have 52 sets right now. And I think that's going to give me a lot of collector program points, basically, to where I can use that as kind of like my foundation every six months to stack up those points. I have a decent amount of collectibles right now. I mean, I used to have over 500. But right now, I have 374, which I feel like is a decent amount. Oh, I kind of like this idea. It is definitely a hot take. A lot of people won't like it. But I kind of like this idea. Because that completely eliminates people complaining about, you know, bots getting... Well, I guess a bot account that have, has like 10 accounts, I guess they would still get away with it. But at least this, this way, people aren't complaining that others are getting multiple when they can't even get one. Every time I list something, you know, people just keep undercutting me. Like DC cover girls, right? How the limit's only like two or something like that, two or three. Market down. The market was down for everyone, but I think it's coming back up. Uh, so I would keep that in the mind too. I just found Kay's uh, Kay's uh, VV account. I just gave him a follow. He's selling a low mint, a little bit too expensive than what I would be able to pay for it. But that's definitely a low mint that I would want. I'm surprised he's not keeping it. I guess he probably needs a gem to keep reinvesting. Yeah, definitely very slow right now, Marina. I think we uh, are crashing the app. It's definitely moving mad slow when I'm trying to like uh, scroll down. Wow, that rare floor just went down big time. <laughs> oh, man. I'm surprised it's that low, actually.
yeah, <laughs> multiple phone or multiple drops on the same phone, it's definitely going to get harder and harder and harder. The first comic book that dropped, Marvel Comics number one, a lot of us were able to get eight, 10, 12 drops. <laughs> kind of just unbelievable. When you think about it today. Pat said, we know because we're OGs, but I have homies that have been here since September and have only gotten five drops or less. It's definitely been a struggle, man. Um, I would definitely agree that, you know, drops have only gotten harder and harder. And I think what's going to happen is it's really just going to shine a light on the people that do have those big collections because it's it's think about how hard it is now just to get a few collectibles or finish a set or to buy that secret rare. It's hard these days. Oh man, yeah, you got 15 M1 comics. That's amazing. Only down the three left, had to reinvest them. I mean, it just goes to show, too, we didn't know how quick they were going to take off either. Like, they took off fast. I think a lot of people were uh, just constantly just collecting them, right? I mean, when they were as low as $3, $4, $5 in the marketplace, that's smart money. They were just rounding them all up, holding them. I think a lot of people now started to collect them as well, too. I mean, they're just so, so you can't find them anywhere in the physical world, right? It's such a limited common. So in order for that to be on the VV app as an NFT that we can own, when it's the first ever comic book on the VV app. I think it's going to be game game changing, um, especially once the actual collectors get here. Like I said, we don't have that many true hardcore comic collectors right now, but I think it will it will start the trend for sure. It's definitely slow for me. I did not get all those DC artist alley set. I still have a couple more to get. I am going to try to complete that first series, though. Wow, montage. R2-D2 for the wife, number 94. That's an iconic. That's a holy grail right there. That's the first ever Star Wars. And the fact that you have R2-D2, which is, I think, the my favorite one out of them all, out of the Star Wars one, C-3PO. I think R2-D2 looks amazing. And a sub-100, man. Whoo! Shout out to the wife. That's a good one. That is a good one to get right there. Load, hurry up. <laughs> I just saw a $30. That that's not gonna still be there. A 213. Yeah, it's gone. A 213 just got sold for $30. Sheesh. How to do it. How to do it. I just got myself. The comic that I wanted. How to make my moves. This is it. How to get my three digit. 989. Let's go. How to get my three digit right there. Can you guys see is it focus up? Yeah, 989. That's my baby. See, I'm a big fan of these three digits. Love the way they look. That's just a personal thing. Plus, I think they're going to be big. But when I get these three digits, the common ones, that's kind of just for my personal collection right there that I want to have in my showroom. Sniping. What was the first comic on the app? So the first comic on the app was this one. Marvel Comics number one. 
first ever comic on the app. I think that's the one, you know, if you stock up on comics, I don't think you can go wrong with that one. That's like the Bitcoin of comics. <laughs> I think if we do get the DC comics, I think that's going to be big time as well. But again, to have the first ever comic book on the app, have the first ever stamp on the app, first ever collectible on the app. These are historic moments, historic collectibles, comics. Where I see it is a really, really safe collection, not financial advice. <laughs> hey, wow, punch, you stole the two one three. That's big time, man. I tried. What's up, pioneers? Let's go, Jay Kill in the house. They kill definitely a pioneer. Comment is my trademark. Oh, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Is my trademark. <laughs> Do you mean is that what you're known by? So am I three. C3PO 59 by accident for 10 a few days ago. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate, <laughs> Daniel. That is definitely unfortunate. But you know what? When you do things like that, you just got to chalk it up as I say this all the time. We're all human. We make mistakes, right? No one's perfect. This is an NFT space to where no one's going to college for it yet. We're not taking classes on it yet. The only way to learn, unfortunately, is by making mistakes. You made a mistake there. You sold it for 10 by accident. You probably, I would say, meant to sell for like, 10,000 or a thousand and you accidentally hit 10. It happens. Absolutely. Um, it's one of those things where it can be deflating, right? It makes you not even want to continue. I, I've definitely been there. I've sold things on open sea by accident for a lot less than what it should have been. We all make mistakes. And so, you know, I, when I talk to a lot of people, OGs in the, in the game, Fran Alations, man, go in the NFT world. I mean, talking to people like that, knowing that they make mistakes too. You're not the only one it feels a lot better. So, I would say, Daniel, you know, you're not the only one who's made mistakes, right? And you're not going to be the last one to make mistakes. Just realize that that was a paid lesson that you had to pay for. And so you, you, it was an expensive lesson, but you learn your lesson, hopefully. Take your time next time when you're listing these and just move on from it. You know, you're going to have a lot more wins later on. Okay, so, yeah, you meant 10K. Probably you hit like 10 point zero whatever thing was gonna be 10.1k or whatever it was end up selling for ten dollars and that's something that new users are still going to make mistakes on you know i mean it's really unfortunate but it's just a pay less than my man that's all it is right i mean luckily you did it now i know it seems like a huge huge nft and it is a big one right star wars but it could have been even a bigger one in the future it could have been something that was a hundred thousand dollars that you sold it for ten dollars right so having that perspective, knowing that it could always be much worse. It may feel deflating now, but don't worry. Oh, okay. Well, at least you got 10K for it. Okay. So that makes me feel way better, my man. <laughs> I thought you sold it for, 10, for $10. So you still made 10K on it. Um, not the end of the world at all then. I mean, I know you probably could have got more, but you know what? It's not the end of the world. Nola review. So you still think uh, Omi will hit a dollar? I do. I don't know when. I've always said, I don't, I don't know when it's going to hit a dollar, but it's an inevitable. Not financial advice. Nothing I say is financial advice. But my, in my opinion, absolutely. <laughs> Pat says, nope. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I do see it hitting a dollar. L hex. My response to this would be, I think just because there is a two-step confirmation process, right, to make it list. But I think what happens is we just do it so quick. I'm, I'm saying we as and in, I'm included too. Like, luckily, it's never happened on VV just yet. Knock on some wood. But I do think, you know, we just hit confirm double tapper so quickly to where mistakes definitely I see happening. Hey, B-boy. Shout out to you, Lance Secret Rare. <laughs> Pass. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I thought, I mean, I've seen people, you know, actually sell things for a dollar. So when he said 10, I thought, you know, he just sold for $10, but 10K, you can't be too upset about that. I know, you know, sub 100 could go for more, but you just flip, you know, a couple hundred or whatever it was, maybe 60 gems into $10,000. That's definitely big time. You definitely took a win, right? I mean, it's not like you're taking L on that. <laughs> Done window shopping for now. <laughs> That's kind of what it is, right? A lot of times. It's not listed yet for a few reasons. What right now we're still in the go chain, but we're in that migration process to Ethereum. So once we are on Ethereum, that's when we're going to see Omi, I think, listed on a lot more exchanges. Right now, a lot of exchanges don't want to have to deal with a whole different blockchain. But I think once we're on Ethereum, you can see exchanges like Coinbase get li like list Omi. Now, it's not a confirmation that Coinbase is going to be listing Omi, but I just see that's one of the major exchanges that probably will list it eventually. And I think the floodgates will be open once that happens. Yeah, the price of the uncommon, I think, is definitely slept on for sure. JQ, what was the problem that you had? Oh, yeah, the market's definitely mad slow right now. I think there's a ton of users on it. Also, a huge YouTube um, interview, or not really interview, just someone who talked about Vivi that has massive following that I thought was huge. It's kind of showing you that this is right on the cusp of mainstream. This is from the Paul Barron Network. He's got 246,000 subscribers. And it's really the following that impresses me, right? This is, if you want to check out this video, I'll just show you the very beginning of it. All right, so today we are jumping into OMI, OMI, Ecomi, VV. All these are going to make sense to you in just a minute and how they all tie together. This is going to be a big one, guys. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back to Tech Bath. All right, so electronic comics that's what vv really is if you think about vv the definitely concept. a great great whole long you know video to watch i think there's maybe an hour long that's only 14 minutes long actually sorry i thought it was a lot longer than that only 15 minutes long if you want to check it out definitely a good one facts the app is crashing <laughs> I'm not sure why the commons doing better than the uncommon right now. I think a lot of times people are, I don't know if it's catching on is the right word or they're starting to like a lot more of the commons as well. I, I think they're all going to do well. I really do. I think for what I was saying is the common is the original cover of these physical comics to where a lot of these people, which rightfully so they're comparing the digital comic price to what the physical counterpart is in the real world's price. And when you do that, you have to realize well, you're comparing the digital comic to the physical counterpart, but oftentimes the only one in the digital comic world that has the same cover as the physical counterpart is the common. So when you put those two, two and two together, I think that's why the focus right now is on those low mint commons. It is for me for that reason. Right, exactly. A-Rock said that. Green Goblin said, Paul Barron's the bomb. Very good info on all things crypto. Thank you. Oh, Adam Willie Young, shout out to you. Got super lucky on a secret rare today. Let's go. It's a tough one. It really is. I think secret rares will do well for sure. Um, I think it's going to come down to your own decision, what you want to do. It all depends. Secret rares 2.1K right now. We've seen the secret rares dip below 1,000. But again, this is the first appearance of a crucial, crucial character villain, right? First appearance of Doc Ock. This is a you know some uh, a comic that collectors really will collect and really want. So the the demand is definitely there. Um, if this is your first secret rare, it may be something to where you know that emotional attachment is worth more to you than what the price is. So. 
You may be happier keeping that, or you may be happier getting two thousand dollars right now and starting building your collection out with that two thousand. I don't think there's a wrong way to play it. I think it just comes down to everybody's individual own decision. And I'm getting really cold right now because I started the. Uh, let's go. We got Kelvin in the building with a new member. I started the chat in a pretty hot room, turned the air off and everything, or turned the heat off. And now it's getting pretty cold in here. Uh, grabbed a 1966 Uncommon before apps start glitching out. Jay Kill, I think that was a solid, solid move, my man. I think XRP and Omi are the two that will probably make everyone rich. I'm going to say absolutely, Nicole. I think XRP is definitely due for a big run up. I don't know when it's going to happen. I like that one as well. Hey, JD was out for some time. Got ultra rare today, but won't sell it until at least 500, 600 plus. What's your thoughts? I think it'll get there for sure. Let's go. We got Kelvin Lima. Became a YouTube member. Big shout out to you, Kelvin. Let's go. I'm not sure what happens when I press this star here. <laughs> big time, big time right there. First member, I think. Let's go, Kelvin. Darkstone says hodl for now. Yeah, I think, you know, the price has dipped a little bit. I think 350 for that ultra rare. Let me check real quick. It's 53 in the market. I feel like it's still pretty low. I feel like definitely more have to get delivered. So 324. Could it dip a little bit more? Sure. But I think long term, like you said, you want to get about 500, 600 for it. I think you just got to hodl them. I think the Marvel Comics secret rare. The Marvel Comics number one secret rare. I think that'll be big time. Absolutely. Kelvin, let's go, my man. Also, shout out to APB, man. APB Bulldogs. I mean, what he did yesterday, he sent over uh, Kelvin, uh, I think it was a comic book. Awesome, man. Comic or collectible. I think it was a Comic, pretty solid comic, too. I mean, shout out to you, my man. I mean, making people's day out here. December was using too much coffee, Gate. Fantastic Four, number five, Secret Rare. I think that's a big one. I think that's the one with Dr. Doom, right? Could be wrong, but off the top. Let me see what the prices are for that. The market is moving slow right now. I mean, I think it shows you. Let me get, exit the app real quick. Shows you that crazy demand right now. Yep, Fantastic Four number five. That's Doctor Doom. Secret Rare is two point five k. I think it's got a lot of room to grow still. That's definitely a key comic book. It's definitely glitching. Definitely glitching. No, everyone's phone definitely heats up a lot for sure. At least I got a low mid JD membership. That's a fact. I think you're number one, my man. Oh, Dark Stone followed you over the weekend by accidentally finger slip. Unfollowed when wanting to click to see profile. How can I find you again? On the VV app? Is that what you're asking for? So I can list something right now, and then you guys can uh, follow if you want. I'll follow back. All right, let's see. All right, so actually, I do have something listed. It's not even a crazy amount because I'm actually thinking about trying to sell it. So it's my secret rare Captain America. So if you go to the Captain America right now and look, it's probably one of the top ones closer to the floor. It's number 303, and it's selling for 2.1K I have it at. 
So if you go into the Captain America, not the first appearance one, but the animated one, I got this on the drop for 400. Hold on to it for a while. I have the whole set. This is actually probably one of the first times in a while, maybe ever, that I only have one of it. I have the whole set and I'm letting it go. I'm breaking the set. But that's one uh, one collectible to where if you want to follow, you can definitely look in the market. Hey, Vivi Las Vegas, $5 super chat. Let's go. Appreciate you big time. He said, I appreciate you, bud. Keep up the great work. I appreciate you big time. Is Avengers 47 a misprint? The first two pages look the same. Oh, now this has actually happened with another comic book. I forget the one that it happened with. I don't think it's Avengers 47 because that's a new one. But it was like a double cover. And people were wondering, is that going to make it more valuable? Because I think that's like a misprint in the comic world. So if I can find it real quick. Was it Kang? There was another comic book to where it's a double cover. I can't find it for sure. But if you guys find it, let me know in the chat. Kinro. <laughs> on the Kang, that's what it is, on the Kang. Every VV comic has a misprint, could you imagine? Okay, so it's Kang then, yeah, okay. So Kang's the one with that double print. Sounds like an opportunity, right, self-plug? He said, uh, so if this number three is going up, what about the Amazing Spider-Man number one? Just about for $110 the other day. Yep. James, I don't think there's a single secret rare Spider-Man for $340. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not sell it for $340. I, I hope you meant three thousand four hundred dollars. That would be a little bit more reasonable. No, I didn't. Wow, yes, yeah, three digit. That's a big one right there. So many conspiracy theories going on right now. <laughs> James got a bunch of offers right now from the fans. Everyone's trying to buy it. <laughs> Toss some money at him. 340. Let's do it. Sorry, my mistake. Man, ultra rare. <laughs> it's a tough one, Jabe. I mean, long term, I definitely see it being more than 340. But short term... I'm going to be surprised if it dips a little bit lower. But again, it's about half of what I think Spider-Man number one is right now. So if it does dip, I don't expect it to dip too, too much further. Like right now, it's 300. Could it be 250? Yeah. I don't see it being much, much lower than 250, 200 at the very, very least. It's hard to say how low will it go because some of these ultra rares are only like 150 bucks, which I think are steals. Um, but this is a pretty prime big character, so I don't see it really being too much lower than 300. 275 ish is, I feel like, yeah. So the 300 just got bought, it's at 313 right now. So I feel like that's kind of going to be the floor, anywhere from like 275 ish to 300. Maybe dips a little bit lower, but long term, I think this is a huge character, Dr. Octopus. Yeah, 249 is a good one. I 
That's the way to do it, VV Las Vegas. Just trying to buy and hold as much VV NFTs and Omi as I can. I don't I really think so. I think that's the best bet. I think the only, for me, like the only reason why I would sell anything is just to reinvest in something else that I really want or that I think could be even more valuable potentially. Otherwise, I'm not selling anything to cash out yet. Like, there's too many good opportunities right now. Definitely. And so like, that's the thing, Josh, there's so many different options you can do. There's no real wrong answer. I mean, something could be a wrong answer to someone else, but the right answer to someone else, you know, so, or the right answer to you, but the wrong answer to someone else. So. No, I haven't heard about this actually, but I do think drafting is actually a good platform to make NFTs accessible to people. I just don't think it's that premium content just yet, but I think they're on their way to, you know, evolve and last in this nft space because their first nft drops you know just the ability to cash out and to put money in to buy them they made it really simple so i think that's something that's crucial a lot of these N nft platforms besides vv they make it really hard to get really it's not user friendly with the whole metamask experience for most people not into crypto they're not going to go through with that they would rather you know just put their credit card in and buy it like a DraftKings. but vv is really i think the king but it's good to see other platforms, you know, make it the accessibility for these NFT platforms, NFTs in general, a little bit easier. Ah, so this is, yeah, that was the wrong one. Yep. That zombie Fantastic Four had the ultimate Cap America story. So it'd be fun if they, that happened again, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen again. Oh, geez. Johnny Kane. Well, first of all, shout out to your first name. It's an amazing first name. <laughs> but he said, I bought an $80 NFT on OpenSea with a $150 gas fee. Like, that's the kind of stuff that just isn't going to sit with your average person who's not in the crypto space, who's not already involved in the NFT space. If they hear that, they're never going to pay for anything like that, you know? So I think that's why Vivi is that gateway into NFT for mainstream. Appreciate you, Getsy. Have a good one, brother. Appreciate you for joining. I'm going to be heading out soon, too. <laughs> Paul Will, the comments are going insane right now. I think, you know, people are just running the price up right now. People are grabbing them. And, you know, not only are people are running that price up, I think people are starting to like the comments a little bit more now that they realize that it has that physical cover counterpart to it. And this is a big comic. So I think, you know, people are just kind of changing and, and I would say changing their strategy a little bit. It probably isn't exclusive December. That's what I'm thinking. Like if Vivi has it too, I feel like it probably won't be exclusive to meaning it may be a little bit different. Maybe the NFL PA has those moments on the DraftKings type thing. And VV may end up having just the players on them. Let's go, Gary O. Thank you for the super chat, big time. Page nine, bottom corner. Octopus calls Spider-Man Superman. Error. I tweeted a picture. Wow, let's go. Should I retweet it? Wow, Gary, you sniped that one too. Oh my gosh. That's big time. Uh, that's you were fast with that too. I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a steal. If I don't I don't have the gems for it, so hopefully I can bless someone else. That's amazing. I'm going to look. Uh, let's see. You said you tweeted it. 
You think that's an error in the comic book, like in the actual physical world comic book too? Like, do you think they made that error in that book? Or is this like a specific VV, you know, misprint only? That would be interesting. I really am interested to see. How that one plays out. <laughs> Let's go. Definitely got to get to Miami. Self plug. So you try on multiple devices for one account? No, I only use one device, one account the entire time. So I would definitely. He said, do. So do you try? No, I only try on one device the entire time. I think you should only try on one device. I'm not even sure if it works if you're on multiple devices on one account. I would say definitely try to not bend the rules at all because at the end of the day, you do not want your account restricted or something like that. So, Wow. Okay, so the physical had that same misprint as well too. That's interesting. I'm glad you pointed that out and know that. Stan Lee joke. Yeah, could you imagine if Stan Lee is uh just pulling all kinds of jokes in there? I wonder if it was like an error by him. He accidentally did it, or if he's like, I wonder if people will catch this. <laughs> it's in the real book. I'm I'm not sure, Riley Smith. Um, if it wasn't in the real book, I think they would probably fix it. But if it's like a misprint in that physical book, too, they may leave it in this one. I agree. Portfolio, definitely. It's like a game within a game. Absolutely. A lot of these moves have to be made in the secondary market because the drops are so hard now. Yeah, if it's in the real book, I think they'll probably leave it in the digital NFT world too. But one more time, I'm going to go over the market prices with you guys since we got some changes. 939 available in the market. The price is $50 for the common. The uncommon... 358 in the market, $64. 203 in the market for the rare, $99. I'm glad I sold mine for like $140, wherever it was, to get that low mint. The ultra rare, $290 in the market. Secret rare, $51 in the market, 2.1K. Yeah. If it's definitely in the real book and it's not a VV misprint, then I think they'll just leave it in there. Absolutely. It's just part of history, you know, part of Stan Lee's history. <laughs> possibly Kelvin possibly he said maybe it was an intentional joke <laughs> could be all right guys I'm headed off appreciate you guys all you know for all the support the super chats Kelvin appreciate you big time um a lot of big things are coming we don't know what this drop is going to be this weekend we know it's kind of an anime ish drop right so I want to hear your guys predictions thoughts in the comments what you think the anime ish drop will be you know, is it something that we're all expecting or is it going to be something out of the, you know, out of the blue that we don't know? I have no idea. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Appreciate you big time for all the support. We're tuning out. It's your boy, Johnny Don. We out, y'all.